what should we call it? Like the student teacher tag? Yeah. Yeah, I think oh that God. sounds right. Good enough. Um, okay. So we can't see ourselves, but okay. we're definitely in frame. Probably for the best. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> All right, everyone. So this is Jessica. Hello. She is my student teacher this year and my first student teacher ever. Um, but we spent a little bit of time together already. So, um, but we're going to dig into the questions. Um, so we're just going to go through the questions. There's like 22 of them. Um, and we're going to try to do it quickly because we are on our prep right now. And we don't want to like take too much time. Yeah. Okay. So first question. What are your names and where or what do you teach? I'll let you go first. Mm. Uh, teach in the East Valley. Yep. Name, Jessica. <laughs> what do you and teach? I teach, oh, <laughs> currently in full takeover for science, um, three days a week, like she's mentioned. And um, yeah, that's pretty much sums it that's up. That's basically it. Um, I'm Charlotte and we, yes, we teach in the East Valley and I teach fourth grade science and social studies. Um, okay, so number two, when will you graduate and when did I graduate? Okay, so I'm gonna graduate in December of this year, 2023. A little bit off by a semester, kind of awkward. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. So I have one more semester after this. And I actually graduated in December of 2014. So I'm also a December one, which, you know, you share that. <laughs> All right, so what school, college, did you or do you attend? We both went to ASU. Yep, ASU. Devils. Goes Devils. I went to NAU for one year, so also go Jacks. I did, like, <laughs> Mesa Community College, Yavapai College, oh, yeah, and I did, ASU. Yeah, I did a few years at Community College, yeah, too. It's the way to go. High school, get some credits in. It's cheaper. Okay, number four. Describe your program. Like, okay, so mm -hmm. I think what they want to know is, so every program's different. How long do you student teach? How many days do you student teach? Like, what is your student teaching program like? Right. So this is interesting because I heard rumor on the street is that they're changing it after this semester. Okay. And there might be less, even less student teaching than I already have. So I've already done mm, two semesters of interning. So that's more just like observations. So I did one semester in sixth grade and eighth grade um, with some STEM electives in there. And then I did one semester interning in the beginning of this year in fourth grade. And then we like requested that we I stay here for the rest of the year for student teaching. So you have two semesters of interning and then two semesters of student teaching. Your first semester of student teaching is three full days a week, which isn't what I'm in right now. And then next semester is um, five full days. Okay, um, so it does change. Yes, yeah, so regardless, your last semester you're teaching full time. A lot of people try to find paid positions for that, but it's not a guarantee. Um, so during your last semester, you're basically just teaching and you don't really have any more classes. That's kind of nice. So when I student taught, it was the whole year, the whole last year, and it was four days a week the entire time. Mm -hmm. So the one day, it was like it, whatever like your district's half day was or their early release was the day you would go to class. So they tried to they tried to partner with districts that all had the same like day off or like half day so that the student teachers could go. It was like Wednesday we would go. We don't even know what we're doing at the end. Yeah. I'm not trash on the Instagram, oh. but yeah. <laughs> all right. So right now, this is question five. How many classes are you currently taking versus how many will you take next semester? Yeah. So right now they're all online, um, but they're Zoom meetings twice a, or three times a week. So I have my student teaching course that goes with this, and then I have three other classes with it. And then next semester it'll just be um, a 12 credit one course that goes with my student teaching. Okay. I think it was very similar to mine, except the whole year. I think actually the whole year we had multiple classes because oh. we would go to class that Wednesday and it would be multiple classes that day. That doesn't sound yeah. good. No, it doesn't. <laughs> All right, so question six. Do you work a real job in addition to student teaching? I do. I work at, I don't want to say where I work at, but <laughs> I work at like a community center. Um, like an HOA. It might be associated with an HOA. Mm -hmm. Don't get mad at me. I don't make the rules. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and then seasonally, I also work at like a farm and we like sell pumpkins and do like Christmas so light show stuff. So, so cute. <laughs> 
Um, okay, question seven. How did you meet? How did this get set up? I can answer this one. Yeah. So Jessica, like she mentioned before, she had been interning here with a couple of the other electives teachers in different grade levels. Um, and they just asked me in like, I feel like it was like July, would you like a student intern? I had already had two interns previously. So I was like, sure, that sounds great. Like they come one or, you know, once or twice a week and they just hang out. And um, so I said yes. And I think it's because they knew your interest was in STEM science. Mm -hmm. So um, our my principal was like, oh yeah, Valdez would be great for that. And then um, we were able to kind of like click when she came. And so when it came time for her to like venture away and do student teaching, she mentioned she wanted to stay in the area. And I was like, well, do you want to just stay with me? Like you already kind of know what's going on. And so, I mean, I think she wanted to stay. <laughs> I think. I was like, please. <laughs> um, you never really said like, yes, please. I want to stay. Like, send the email. <laughs> that was like before we've created our little bond. Um, but yeah, we sent emails and it got set up so that Jess could stay with me for her student teaching. And so this is my first time mentoring like an actual student teacher, um, which I think has been, it's been really great. Yeah. Um, okay. Number eight, what has been the highlight of this process and the biggest challenge? You go first. Ugh, I feel like the highlight is like the result of the biggest challenges because like when your student teaching you're really just like diving into the unknown honestly especially when it's like okay do you want to lead this block now which it's like yeah i need to because i really want the experience but it's like Scary. what do i do like you know what to do you know all the terms and everything but it's like okay let's just do this so i feel like my highlight has been just like really growing and like getting more comfortable just like presenting content and like you know just finding my own space in the classroom and everything but that's also been the biggest challenge is like just going for it and like putting in the effort to improve in that. Yeah, I, I think like you hit it like the I think your highlight kind of matches my highlight and your challenge matches my challenge. The biggest highlight has been watching you like come out of your shell because when you first arrived, you were kind of quiet and like you just were kind of reserved, which is very normal. And throughout this process, you have like blossomed into this like big blooming flower. And that's also, like you said, one of the challenges, like me having to push you to do that, like mm -hmm. saying, okay, Jess, you're going to lead the last <laughs> class. Like, okay, I can tell she's uncomfortable. Like I could tell she's a little nervous, but I'm going to push her anyway. So that's been a challenge for me because I'm not typically one like with adults mm -hmm. to be like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> Why don't you go do that? Like yeah. kids, I can tell what to do all the time, but like adults, it's a little bit harder. So yeah. it has been, cha it was challenging to get you like started but now that you have like it's been so nice to see you like oh this is you mm -hmm. this is who you are like you've come into your comfort zone and blossomed and it's really nice to see um what is something you wish you could change about the experience or your program hey, about my program or your experience well um about my experience i guess graduating in december is a little bit awkward because if you were to graduate at the end of a- uh, In May. In May, yes. Then you would be in the same classroom student teaching three days a week and then five days a week with them. I've just been lucky that I've been able to be in this classroom for the full year, but a lot of my peers, they switched in January and then they had to do the student teaching with a whole new group, whole new teacher and everything. So it just made it unfamiliar. Um, but that's kind of, it just depends on when you're graduating. Um, other than that, I feel like my experience has been really good, especially compared to a lot of people. I've just been lucky with my <laughs> placement and everything. So yeah. yeah. Only thing I would change is I like wish you guys didn't have to take classes at the same time as your placement. Yeah. Like I wish you could be here Monday through Friday and um, you know, maybe like an after school class mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, just so that you can really see the entire process. And then I also wish there was a way for them to make it so that you don't start student teaching until the beginning of the school year and then the end. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I know like timing is weird and you kind of have to do it that way. But like you said, a lot of your peers are like, they had to start over in a new class mm -hmm. in January and then they're gonna see a completely different 
you know, thing at the end of the year. It just would be nice if it could be like the whole school year, one full swish. Exactly. Um, so you can see how it really Everything. happens. Yeah. Yeah. You were definitely lucky with that. Yeah. Um, okay. Number 10, what is the biggest thing you have learned from one another? Hmm. I guess, I don't know. Well, obviously I've learned a lot from you. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it's still recording. Watch, we're sitting here. Okay, we're good. Um, <laughs> biggest thing. Like your biggest takeaway. Um, if you want to think, I can share mine. Yeah, you can okay. share yours. So you have a lot more patience than I do. <laughs> like, and you're so sweet about how you like react to certain things. I think that I'm just like a salty seasoned teacher at this point. Don't get me wrong. Like I definitely try to be like more patient with certain things but like I've noticed you are a lot more patient than I am like your ability to like save your frustration for later and then talk about it with that child whereas I'm very direct and I'll like get it in the moment typically I'm like a squat down and talk to that person kind of gal but at this point in the year I've been a little bit more like like right up in the business kind of have to be um, which I don't love and I've been trying to tone it back because you've been inspiring me to do it. So my biggest takeaway is like your patience and your ability to respond in a more like calm manner. Not that I'm like, you know, a banshee or anything in the classroom, but right, no. like you're, you've inspired me in that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess behavior management wise, kind of the same thing like your boundaries are very set and I'm such like a people pleaser like if they say please with like puppy dog eyes I might be like yeah I'll make an exception for you but you can't do that no because when you make exceptions then they take advantage of it even if they don't mean to mm -hmm. um so I've really learned that your boundaries are really firm I really like the like don't stalk me rule mm -hmm. even though I'm not the best at <laughs> keeping up with that I need to be better you'll get better you'll get better but like yeah just learning really firm boundaries and not being a pushover like I <laughs> I'm usually a I used to be person. a pushover because I am a people pleaser yes. just like you and it's so hard yeah. to separate your people pleaser personality from your classroom management because it's true mm -hmm. like they could look at you with puppy dog eyes and you're like okay fine yeah. but if you do that they're gonna know they can like push the boundary so I'm glad that that's your yeah. biggest takeaway because it's a big one okay this is where the fun ones come in so what is the others go to lunch Yours is usually like a wrap of some kind. It looks like a, a whole wheat tortilla or something like that. <laughs> and you can toss it in the microwave. And you always have chips and dip. Oh, yeah. Always. I have <laughs> chips and dip. <laughs> oh, that's, that's all day. And you're like way healthier than I am. She usually has like chicken and like vegetables. <laughs> vegetables. Do you like sweet potatoes? I do like sweet potatoes. She eats sweet potatoes a lot and like chicken. And. Yes. Do you have vegetables? You usually, you usually have vegetables. Have, like, some like carrots. Yeah. <laughs> um, very seldom do I see Jessica with like snack food. Like me, I'm snacking all day. I'm surprised you don't. When I get home, it's yeah. Do you? Okay, yeah. it's a snack attack when you get home. Mm -hmm. All right, what is the other's go-to beverage? Mm -hmm. You're switched up a little yeah, bit. I switched break. back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Like switched up a bit. Yes. So after winter break, or no, spring break? After spring break, yeah. when you went to Nashville, you were like, I'm not drinking coffee anymore, which is, I was like, okay, <laughs> whatever. But you were like drinking like mint tea, yeah, mint tea, and then you tried the chai, it wasn't brewing, I don't know, it was a whole issue. Yeah, we but we try to drink a lot of water, we drink our energy drinks mm. every once in a our while. Our Alani News, we love those. <laughs> They're a bad habit I haven't of seen ours. you with it in the last couple of days, though. I you switched back to coffee, didn't you? But I have, I do have a coffee. I'll drink both. I'll drink a coffee in the morning and then I'll, well, I just gave him my answer. That's all right. I was going to say it anyway. Coffee. Yeah. Yeah. You drink coffee and Alani knew. And I learned that her favorite drink is raspberry green tea. Ooh, yeah. Raspberry, raspberry sweet tea from sweet Texas tea. Roadhouse. Mm -hmm. Good. Good stuff. Have you ever tried um, the raspberry green tea from Dutch? Yes. I love it. They have like a raspberry coconut one or something. Ooh, I'm gonna try that coconut. Yummy. But yeah, hers is coffee, water, Alani new, and that's usually all the only thing thing I see. I've seen you drink two Alani's though in one day. Oh yeah. That that was a rough day for you, huh? <laughs> 
I was like, did I'm you talking. sleep that night? I think it was when it was conferences and we were here until like 7 p.m. Oh, yeah, And I was yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, cracking yeah. open another one. Cracking another one. <laughs> Luckily, you could sleep with that though, not yeah, me. I'd be like, good. <laughs> um, okay, name the other's biggest pet peeve in the classroom. Like, you tell them what bothers me the most and I'll tell them what bothers you the most. Mm, I might have to think about that. Okay. Mine for you is when you say something like, okay, everyone stop talking. Or like you're starting to give a direction and you forgot to like call for their attention. You do this cute little thing where like you'll stop and you'll go. <laughs> so it has to be when like you, you've given directions and none of them are listening, mm -hmm. and you give this face like, are you guys kidding? <laughs> I'm just like, if you guys... But then you figure it out, and you're like, okay, now I'm going to get their attention, mm -hmm. and then it's fine. There's probably other things that peeve you more, but you don't show it. No, that's that's pretty accurate, yeah. And I'm like, okay, if you guys didn't listen, then you're on your own. Like, yeah. I don't feel bad. That's what I say. I'm like, I don't feel bad if you mess it up. <laughs> um, your biggest pet peeve? Yeah. Time wasting, I oh, would probably God, say. It drives me nuts. When they're just like in la la land and then they had the whole warm up time to like sharpen their pencil or whatever, and then it's after and they're like, la da da, I'm gonna, I don't know. Yep. I, I, I think say. that's it, like time wasting. Yeah. For sure. And the pencil sharpening thing like hits it on the head. Like you had five minutes to sharpen your pencil. Why are you standing up now mm -hmm. and sharpening it? Yes. Yep. <laughs> okay. Name the other's most used phrase. I have yours ready. <gasps> Look at me. Oh, <laughs> that's your favorite. I do the, I take your eyeballs. Yeah, look at me. Because they don't look at me. Like turn your body around. Yep, that's your that's most used phrase. I guess I do say that a lot. Yeah. I but like I, that. there's nothing wrong with it. It's just your favorite. Um, yeah, what's mine? I don't know. I feel like. I feel like I say let's go ahead a lot. Yes. Let's go ahead and... Yeah, that's true. You can't control what others do to you. Mm, I do say that a lot. <laughs> you can control how you can react to the situation. I do say that a, a lot. lot of that. Yeah, I do. But yeah, I can't think of one for you. That's a funny one. There you go, okay. Um, <laughs> okay, this one's for you. How do you balance work, school, and life? I don't. No, I'm just kidding. I'm fine. <laughs> um, do you keep like an agenda and write everything down yes. or... I love Google Calendar. Mm -hmm. I have it all color coded. And then I also have a whiteboard um, calendar right next to my desk that oh, I smart. also have color coded. And then I have my planner that also has, it's like all in three different places. So I always know where I need to be. That's good. Um, and then I always am changing my work availability, but like you just have to find what works for you. Yeah. Um, and then I'm always making to-do lists. Like, I don't know. I feel like the typical stuff lists, yeah, calendars. For sure. And just, yeah, you have to prioritize. Like, when you feel burnt out, you have to just go, like, pause for a second and get a little treat or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I'll do that thing where I'll work for, like, 50 minutes, like, take a five-minute break or whatever. Like, yeah. last night, I was like, I'm stressed. And then I went and got ice cream. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's how you fix it. <laughs> we call it retail therapy. That would be, like, food therapy. Yes. I think it works. That's true. Um, the next one is mentor. How do you balance work and mentorship? So, I feel like... Because this is my first time really like mentoring a resident. So I've tried, and you can correct me if I haven't done a good job at this, but I've tried to be very like in the moment, cognitive thoughts, like expressing them to you. Like at the beginning, I would say things like, so the reason I did this or I said this is because. Yeah. And I feel like it's important to communicate like your purpose and my purpose in this partnership so that they understand that when I stop to tell you something, it's for a reason. And I feel like they've done a good job of like, like they just listen, they don't really like say anything. Mm -hmm. But I think being like after school, we have a lot of time to like decompress and like reflect on how things go. And I feel like if you use your time wisely, like your scheduled breaks, your lunch time, your prep, basically any free time you get to like reflect on how either I modeled something or on how you delivered it like that's an easy way to balance your like I guess just speak out loud 
as the mentor, like speak out loud, uh, speak your thought process. Kind of like when you're teaching students how to do math, like I'm thinking about this. Mm -hmm. Like make sure you speak out loud and don't keep things in because your intern or your resident is not gonna know because if you're not saying it, you're just thinking it, they're never gonna know. And in order for you to coach them appropriately, you should be like always talking about your thoughts out loud. Mm -hmm. That way they can really pick up on like, okay, that's why she did that. Or this is what she was thinking when she did that. And I even admit my mistakes too. Like I, when I make a mistake with management or if, if it's an instruction, I make sure to tell you mm -hmm. like, I shouldn't have done that. Or like, maybe I could do this better next time. So I think just being very open with your thought process is very important. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna do like a <laughs> <laughs> So we had to come back and finish filming this way later. I think it's been like two weeks. Yeah, something like that. Since last time we sat down to film this, but we're gonna finish it. Okay, we think we stopped on question 16. So 17 is, what is your dream position? Jessica, you can answer this one because I'm already doing mine. <laughs> My dream position, don't know because I don't have a lot to compare it to, but I guess fourth grade science and social studies. Oh snap. Landed that though, don't worry yep. about it. Yep, she did. We'll have to explain at the end, but yeah. Um, what is the easiest or hardest part of student teaching or mentoring? I can go first so you can think about it. Um, the hardest part, which it hasn't been hard because of like Jessica's abilities, but when you have a student teacher, you have to give up your power. Um, not only of managing the classroom, like I, sometimes I feel like I intervene a lot, but it's like, sometimes it's necessary. Um, but like giving up the power, not only of the control of the room, but also like giving someone else the reins of being responsible for teaching your children what they're supposed to be taught. Now, luckily I'm in a very unique position because Jessica is interested in science. She goes above and beyond to make sure she learns the content before she teaches it. Um, and so I trust her with the information she's providing my students. Now there have been like friends of mine who have had student teachers that have not been that way. It's like they're having to like spend time teaching them how to teach something rather than just them saying, okay, this is what I'm gonna do this day. Here's my lesson plan. Here's what we're gonna do. And then, okay, go ahead and do it. Like, I feel like you're very, like you have it together. You have the content knowledge. You have the consistent behavior management. Like I don't really have to worry about giving you the power in the room because you're able to maintain it and you're able to deliver what needs to be delivered yeah i guess something similar like the hardest part is like the the power balance especially because the kids at first are used to only your word mm -hmm. counts and so you really have to like demand the room and like make sure they take you seriously and be really consistent so that's really hard to pick up especially when you're like new you want them to like you. You don't want to be like me because yeah. um, then they don't respect you. So it's a balance. And then the easiest part, um, I don't know, probably for me, I guess, like, I don't know. <laughs> the easiest part is probably making connections with the kids, I guess, just like walking around the room and like they're just happen to be open and like sharing stuff with you. And so it's just easy to like reciprocate that energy with them. Yeah. Yeah. And this has been a good opportunity for you to see how valuable it is for them to be able to have that time in the morning with you. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like our home room mm -hmm. is like one of the only home rooms that doesn't have drama within. Yeah. Like pretty much all of our homeroom students get along with each other it's kind of like a little family like some of them bicker but even when like one of them says like clap twice if you don't like so-and-so like so-and-so is not mad about it it's just like a joke and everyone gets that and so I think that like you've had a, an opportunity to see how socialization mm -hmm. can really 
affect a homeroom's morale and not only that but like produce a special bond between you and them yeah like we have very special bonds with our homeroom I mean we have bonds with all of them but um taking that time to to build that relationship is really really important yeah the dynamics are very different Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hopefully we stay in touch after this year I hope so one two three yes (laughs) (laughs) I think so I think so (laughs) I hope so. Yeah, me too. Um, is there anything that says, like, did you get a job or something? <laughs> Number 22. I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> well, so, Jessica, why don't you tell them? Because it's kind of, it kind of goes along with this. Yeah. No, it's actually kind of a weird, how weird how it happened. It was yeah. kind of like my fairy godmother came down. <laughs> One of the instructional coaches. <laughs> we were yeah, doing standardized been, like, testing. Fairy godmother. And she came in and she was like, we need a hall monitor. <laughs> And so I was actually selected to watch the restrooms. I've just been so blessed with yeah, that. Yeah, you were job. Yeah, voluntold to watch the restrooms during state testing. And then she just started talking about this open fourth grade science and social studies position. And then all of a sudden people were like texting behind the scenes. Like she was like texting like the dean of students. And then like I got the interview set up. And then all of a sudden now I have a job at fourth grade science and social studies at a different school. Yeah. Same district. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. But, yeah, so we will keep in touch because yes. we're still going to be sharing a lot of things. Yes. And if Jessica needs me or, like, needs any input or, like, needs supplies or whatever, <laughs> I'll be here. <laughs> I'll be there for you. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope we stay in touch. Yeah. What is the funniest thing you've seen your mentor or your resident do? I know mine. Okay, you should say yours first. Mine is when um, the dojo challenge was that you get sturdy. Oh. Get sturdy at recess. And she was out there in her robe because it was like pajama day. <laughs> and her Crocs on. And the funniest part wasn't even her getting sturdy and being all into it. It was that she stopped and she put her Crocs into sport mode first. I was like, I'm like, I'm dying. <laughs> because everybody was like, wait, hey. <laughs> Insert like clip here. <laughs> that got me really good. Oh my God, uh, my God. That is like one of my favorite. Oh. It was the sports mode. It that got me so good. I think I did it without my hands too. I like kicked them into sports mode. I don't remember, but okay, yours definitely beats oh, mine. I mean, I don't have like a specific moment. But you make me laugh every time <laughs> she says something like you guys are really annoying me right now. <laughs> like, she is honest with them. Like, you're being really annoying, really obnoxious. And I just sit back there and I just giggle because I'm like, most teachers don't say things like that. I mean, I say things like that. Like, I'm very honest with them. And so you'll go up and be like, you guys are being really annoying right now. <laughs> like, she'll look right at the two people and be like, you guys are really being annoying right now. And I just True. laugh every single time. Yeah. Yours definitely beat mine for sure. Like but don't worry, you'll have your moment oh. to dance in your robe. Or if the kids get you in your T Rex costume, that's gonna happen I don't before know the if end I could of the year. That. that was like crazy. Yeah. All right, this one's for me. And it's kind of a random last question, but it's fine. Mentor, how do you provide feedback to your resident? Um, I try to do this like not in the moment, like when you're teaching, I try not to do this. I think sometimes I interject, but it's not like to correct you. It's like to add on to what you're saying, Um, which is team teaching. But in between each class, if there's something I feel like she needs to add or change or fix, I always try to say it. And then she typically fixes it between that first and second block. And then by the third one, she has it. So um, I used to, every time you would teach, I would take notes. Um, and then I would just give them to her and then she would write things down in her notebook. Um, and that was really good, but then it got to a place where my notes were just consistent and they were mostly positive feedback. So I didn't feel like I needed to keep them anymore. And then it just turned into like more instructional, like, Mm -hmm. like content level stuff. Like today when I had you add like, or we talked about how electrical energy can be transformed into a different kind. Mm-hmm. That's something you may not have thought of before, or you like you knew it was coming, but like if it went that direction, that it's okay to go there. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. Do you have anything yeah. else you want to add to that? I have something in my head. Oh, you'll ask me, 
you'll kind of like especially when i'm in full takeover for science mm -hmm. you'll ask me a lot like you were like do you want to still do the flashlight lab tomorrow because yeah. they were like so crazy today yeah, yeah telling me to kind of take it away from them and I'll be like uh, I don't know they were kind of fixed it whatever mm -hmm. and then you'll say you're nicer than me which means they probably shouldn't do it <laughs> yeah, they didn't earn it so let's kind of like do what you want to do but like mm, yeah like think about if they earned it or not I always want like want you to have that choice and like I also want you to learn from your own failures and mistakes mm -hmm. too you know like oh shoot that didn't work like or oh man I shouldn't let them do that mm -hmm. or oh man like you totally changed your game like every single time today but it's because you learned from what and that's what teaching is like a lot of what I do is like on the fly it's made up in the moment mm -hmm. and that's okay that's your creative juices flowing that's why it's the art of teaching because things can be made up on the fly and if it works it works and if it doesn't oh yeah yeah, so that is our self-made, with the help of you guys, student teacher mentor tag. So if you want to join us in on this tag, make sure you tag us in the description, or not the description, tag us down in the comments so we can see your video, because I'm sure Jessica would like to see those. Not only that, but some of her classmates might need to see it, because, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe they're mentors. I don't know, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Bye.